According to the Mayan calendar, the world's inception date falls on a day called 4 Ahau 8 Kumho, which is the 11th or 13th of August 3114 BC in the Gregorian calendar. This starting point plays the same role in the Mayan calendar as Christ's birth in the European chronology. In the Mayan calendar, time is divided into cycles or suns. According to the Mayans, each cycle ends with the total destruction of the human civilization. The era of the fifth sun, which lasted more than 5,000 years, ended December 21st, 2012. The humankind was frozen in horror in anticipation of impending catastrophe. For the first time, the theme of Mayan apocalypse appeared in the 1966 book by American anthropologist Michael Coe, who noted with a grain of salt that the date of December 21, 2012 can be considered as the Mayan Armageddon. Frank Waters, an American mystic of the 60s and 70s, quoted it in his books, dedicated to the secret knowledge of the Hopi Indians. In Mystic Mexico, he first mixed Aztec and Mayan cosmology and gave rise to the modern speculations on the topic of the Mayan calendar. Apparently, the humankind tends to scare itself by playing with numerology. People waited for the apocalypse in 1999 with three sixes turned upside down. The end of the world was symbolized by three zeros appearing in the year 2000, the last year of the 20th century. Almost always the humankind was horrified and awaited big troubles in the years which contained a large number of duplicate numbers. For example, in the year 1000, 1555, and 1900. And the more imperfections were exposed in the world, the more there was the feeling of helplessness and confusion, especially in times of crisis. Ancient sources have myths and historical lore about global changes on Earth, sequence, and development of new time cycles. Mayans, as well as Egyptian, Tibetan, and Indian priests have celebrated such dates. They consider them a transition from one cycle to another. The beginning of a new era as the beginning of a new year or a new century essentially doesn't bring anything except formal name change for a time slot. Befouled by the human sinning, the old year ends. With the advent of a new one, the world regains the original sanctity, which was its inherent quality when it just came out of the hands of the Creator, wrote Merkia Iliad, a Romanian philosopher and historian. All calendars of ancient Mesoamerica were cyclic, so they could not be finished for this simple reason. Only cycles inside calendars could be completed. Number of cycles in the Mayan calendar was probably the largest. The primary unit there was kin, which was one day, and the highest order unit was a period of 28 billion 40 million days. Why did the Mayans, who were mainly farmers, need such a complex and most importantly, long calendar with time intervals 
of millions and billions years long. Mayans adopted their calendar traditions from Olmecs, the first civilized people of the Americas, whose origins is still a mystery. What is well known is that the Mayans, who replaced Olmecs, recorded astronomical observations that were so accurate that in the calculation of daily time and annual revolution of Earth around the sun, they came closer than all of the other ancient peoples to the data provided by modern science. Mayans have been the first in the world to invent zero, approximately 1,000 years earlier than the old world peoples. It was represented by a seashell. Numbers were represented by dots and dashes, with dots being ones and dashes being fives. Moreover, their numeral system was not decimal as ours, but vigesimal, and everything including their famous calendar was based on it. It requires 365.2425 days for Earth to perform a complete revolution around the sun. To avoid shifting of the seasons, the Western calendar adds one day called a leap day, February 29th, every four years. More to that, three leap days must be omitted every 400 years. Only with adoption of such a complex system of calculations, it became possible to balance the change of the seasons. Mayans also had an extremely accurate and at the same time quite complex calendar with the absolutely different counting units. They have calculated the duration of the solar year with the exceptional precision, 365.2422 days, just one ten thousandth less than the duration of the solar year accepted today. The Mayan calendar is more accurate than the Gregorian one, having a margin of error of only one day for 5,000 years. How can one get those results without chronometers and other complex instruments that we possess nowadays? According to modern scholars, to achieve such results, they needed to conduct astronomical observations for at least 10,000 years. And why was it so necessary for them to calculate the duration of the month with such precision? For the comparison in the Julian calendar, once introduced by Julius Caesar, and which is still used by the Orthodox Church, the difference is 28 ten thousand. And in the universally accepted Gregorian calendar, which was introduced by Pope Gregory VIII in 1587, it equals 3 ten thousand. According to the myth of creation, described in the ancient Mayan manuscripts, the world began with the quiet sky and the cold sea, where there was no movement, no life, there were only gods of the heart of heaven and water gods of time. Eternal peace was broken when three gods came down from heaven and spoke to the timekeepers about the need for humans as servants, offering sacrifices and gods as the custodians of days. Soon the land rose from the depths of the ocean, vestured with trees and grasses, and populated with animals and birds. 
Mayan gods' first attempt was unsuccessful. Animals were unable to speak, let alone to pray. Therefore, the first man was created from dirt, thus marking the first era. Those creatures did not serve the test of time. They got soaked and turned into mud after the rain. The second attempt wasn't much better. The new human population was made of coral trees and cane, which rendered them dry and rotten and, worst of all, absolutely selfish and unwilling to address prayers and offer sacrifices to their creators. The second era ended with the wooden people eaten by jaguars. The third era was marked by the birth of the divine twins who beat the false god, a monstrous bird Macau, and its brutal sons. The deliverance of the world from monsters and the earthquakes that began after that finished the third era. Next, the fourth era was completed by the voluntary death of the divine twins in a huge fire and their ascension to heaven. Finally, 13 Baptins later, or August 11, 3114 BC, the trio of gods of the heart of heaven created celestial bodies and stars. The most important act of creation was the birth of the sun, which was born out of sacrifice and blood. After that, the first people were created, and thus the era of human history began, the fifth one from the start of the creation. New people were created from the heart of corn, since according to Mayan beliefs, this was the only plant with flowing live juice associated with human blood. So began the cosmic drama which involved humans along with gods. For the sun to continue its path and for the gloom to no longer hang over the world, it needed to be fed the precious water, human blood. Since the days of Mayans, all civilized peoples in Mesoamerica used complex chronological systems with a dual purpose. On one hand, they needed reference points to understand and to anticipate the alternation of natural phenomena, movement of celestial bodies, change of seasons, so they could adapt their rights to them. And on the other hand, they needed a guide to predict the fate of each individual or chances of success in every endeavor using the system of omens, which for them was as rational as for us is the scientific explanation of the world. When people are born or descend into this world, they are automatically included into this world's order, devoured by its all-powerful machine. The sign of their birth will gravitate over them until their death. It will define their very death, and thus their afterlife existence, depending on whether they were chosen to die on the altar, and then they will join the sun's shining suite, or will be doomed to oblivion in a dark underworld of Mithlin. All their fate was strictly predestined at every stage. The Mayan calendar system consisted of not one, but three calendars. All their chronological calculations were based on kin, or day. 20 days made vinyl. Scientists still argue about why this particular number was chosen. But according to one theory, the ideal Mayan counting model could be a person with 20 fingers. The 
The solar year of the Hab calendar had 365 days as our calendar, but it was divided by 18 months, 20 days each, and every month of the day's count was always starting from zero. So-called poor or unfortunate days were added at the end of the year. Names of the month in the Hab calendar mainly reflected their everyday utilitarian purpose. For example, month of Muon could be translated as cloudy or misty. In all likelihood, it could mean a beginning of the rainy season. Month of Pei, or deer, was the beginning of the hunting season. The year according to the Hab calendar started December 23rd. Its first month was Yashkin, or new sun. Each month had a name which was associated with either a natural phenomenon or most often with rituals which had to be performed during that period. Name of every day was associated with some deity. Each hour of day or night had its name and its god. First hour of the day was a day of the fire god. Last day of the night belonged to god Tlalo. Mayans also had a second calendar, Sulkin, or the sacred calendar of priests, which consisted of 260 days and was divided by 13 months, 20 days each. Several attempts were made to explain this calendar as based on some natural cycle, but without success. The combination of Tzolkin and Hob produced a 52-year cycle, which was known not only to Mayans, but also to other peoples of Mesoamerica. Zapotecs, Mixtecs, Toltecs, Aztecs, etc. This combination allowed to clearly identify any of the possible 18,980 days. At the end, the calendar cycle was reset to zero, and the count started all over again. The end of each 52-year cycle was accompanied by magnificent festivities. And all this was a bit like the New Year bash at the end of the century, when Europeans also welcomed the new era with fireworks and other celebrations. Lives of Mexicans were regulated and guided by omens. Merchants have been waiting for one coatl to embark on a journey to the distant southern lands since this sign promised them wealth and success. Those born in one Asolotl were destined to die as prisoners of war. Artists and scribes, and especially weavers, specifically worshipped seven Zachitl, which was favorable for them. If you've been born too touchedly, you'll become a drunkard. But if it's happened for it's swindly, you'll be wealthy and successful, even if you'll do absolutely nothing. Sign one, Makitsli, was lucky for slaves. One, Kali, for doctors and midwives. On the day of four Alan, dignitaries and grandees sacrificed birds to the sun. And on the day of one, Akadal, they presented the god Kitzelkotl, with flowers, incense, and tobacco. We can say that no one, whatever his position or occupation, could avoid serving gods or do anything without checking the signs first. There was also a third calendar, 
which was used to measure time periods of a quite significant length. This calendar was called the Long Count, and it consisted of a total of 1,872,000 days. There have been several measuring units in the Long Count. Day, which is kin, 20 days, vinyl, 360 days, which is 18 vinyl, or 1 ton, 144,000 days, which is bok ton, and so on. The total cycle of the long count consisted 13 bok tons, a bit over 5,125 years. Besides the sun and the moon, another celestial body attracted attention of astronomers, Venus. Duration of the year in this calendar was determined by Venus synodic period, 584 days. Five Venerian years equaled eight solar ones. Every 73 years of the religious calendar precisely matched 52 years of the astronomical one. Since 73 Tzolkin years had the same number of days as 52 Hob years, both Counts of Venerian and solar years matched only after 65 Venerian years, corresponding to 104 solar ones, exactly after two Earth ages. It was the longest period of Mexican chronology, called the Old Age. Human sacrifice among the Mexicans was not inspired by cruelty or hatred. That was their answer, the only answer they could imagine, to the vulnerability of the world living under the constant threat. In order to save the world and humankind, the blood had to be offered, and the sacrifice were not enemies to kill, but the messengers sent to the gods. The messengers who themselves possessed godlike dignity. Sacrifice was the sacred duty towards the sun, something that had to be done for the good of the people themselves. Without it, life in the universe would have ended. Every time when a priest on the top of the pyramid raised the bloodied heart to the sky, the impending catastrophe was averted and pushed to a later date. Human sacrifice was a mystic transformation when death begat life. All was born and existed only because of the blood of the sacrificed. And to evade this sacred duty was to betray the gods, and thus the other people, because what was true for the sun was also true for the earth, rain, forest, and all the forces of nature. The Mexican worldview had a very small place for the humans. They were pushed around by the almighty fate. Neither their earthly life nor afterlife ever belonged to them. Their short stay in this world was predetermined at every turn. They were pinned down by the yoke of the gods and bound by all powerful signs and omens. The very world in which they appeared for a short time to struggle for survival was something ephemeral, sketchy, volatile, and doomed to destruction as all other worlds that previously existed. century AD, the Mayan culture disappeared. Interpretations of the Mayan records foreshadowing doomsday appeared only in modern times. Alas, the Mayan priests were unable to even predict a demise of their own culture. It is likely that the collapse of the Mayan civilization was caused by a prolonged period of drought between 1810 and 1910 AD. The world of the ancient Mexicans was fragile and constantly threatened by disasters. In addition to natural cataclysms, 
and famine, the monstrous sunset deities have been lurking at crossroads at night. There have been sorcerers as messengers of the mysterious twilight worlds, and every 52 years a great horror fell upon the populace of the empire when the sun was setting at the end of the last day of the age, and terrified people asked themselves if it was going to rise again. At the end of each cycle, Mayans always expected enormous, devastating natural catastrophe. Children and pregnant women were locked up. In every city and village, all lights were put out. And most important, all without exception, household tableware had to be smashed to pieces. End of the cycle came when the star in the constellation of the Pleiades reached its zenith and it was marked with grandiose festivities throughout Mexico. The celebration of the happy ending of the old cycle and the beginning of the new one. Lights were lit everywhere. Women and children could leave their houses and craftsmen started making the new tableware. Once again, the world avoided the destruction.